So in order to understand the security of all these discrete log-based protocols, we need to discuss the difficulty of finding um, discrete logs. So we we're going to discuss now for a couple of minutes algorithms for finding a discrete logarithm. And I, I rephrase the problem here again, given a prime P generator G and some result H, we want to find the X, the exponent, such that G to the power X is equal to H modulo P. So a naive approach, of course, is simple, simply trial and error. You compute G, G squared, G cubed, you keep on iterating, multiplying by G, and every time you, com you compare whether the, uh, your result H prime equals H. If not, you just go on. Now, the, the complexity of this algorithm is linear in P, but that means that it's exponential in the size of P. So this is something that uh, sometimes confuses people. Um, you may think that the algorithm is linear, but that's not true. It's, uh, it's, it's exponential. Um, now, for the next algorithm, we need to, to discuss a little bit about the following, about periodic sequences on random mappings. Um, so suppose that I have a set of, of n integers, and I'm, I'm defining um, a random mapping from this set onto itself. So I'm, I'm sort of saying that every, every image is a random element chosen from the set itself. And then what we're going to do is the following. We, we choose an initial value x0, and then we are going to apply f. So, so we get x0, x1 is the f of x0, x2 is the f of the f of x0, uh, x3 is f repeated three times, etc., etc. Now, by the pigeonhole principle, we know this is a finite set, so we know that at some point a repetition must occur. So we, there must be some moment in time where x t plus s is equal to x t. The new value has happened uh, in the past, has happened before. And from that on, the sequence will repeat itself, because once you get these, these two uh, initial points, or these two same points, then when we iterate, um, the, the, the result will be the same. The function is deterministic. So you can see this depicted in this diagram. There will be in a sort of initial tail which, uh, in which no repetition has occurred, but then at some point we will enter the loop, we will enter the cycle, and then um, a repetition will occur. And we are going to take advantage of this property to, to define um, an algorithm to find the discrete logarithm. It can be proven that uh, the expected value of this repetition to occur is about the, the square root of n, capital N, which is the size of, of the set here. And you should um, realize that this is uh, similar to the birthday paradox. Um, similarly to the birthday paradox, we are sampling with replacement. So this is, this is the, the link between the two problems. Now we can make an, an algorithm to discover um, the smallest i such that x to i equals x of i. And this is sometimes called the, the hare and the tortoise. So let's go back to the, to the previous slide. If you imagine here a hare and a tortoise, then the hare will go twice as fast as the tortoise. So at some point when the, the tortoise has entered the cycle, the, the hare at some point will catch up from behind with, with the tortoise. And this is exactly the property that we, that we are uh, using in this algorithm. Um, it's, it's a very basic algorithm. They, they start at the same point. The tortoise does one step at a time. The hare does two steps at a time. And at some point, they are going to be at the same place. So this is what's called Floyd's cycle finding algorithm. And this can be turned into an algorithm for computing the discrete log. So 
we can combine the ideas of the, the previous slides to define an algorithm for computing the discrete log. What we're going to do, we are going to define a random function on the multiplicative group uh, ZP star. And this, this, this random function will include the values G and, and H, which is the, the values of the problem, of the discrete log problem. And what we're going to do, we are creating an, 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 a division in this case. It's a, a relatively simple uh, random function, but it's sufficiently random to have the statistical properties presented earlier. And an important point is that um, we we include in this uh, in this function we include the h and g and and x of i. Um, and by the way, this this zero here in the third case should be should be two. Um, and now what we are going to do? We are going to apply uh, Floyd's algorithm to find a match so that the x of two i equals the x of i. And if we do that, if we have that, then we are sort of lucky because now we can do um, the arithmetic on the on the exponents in the following way. Um, if if you if you write the x i as g of a i h of b i, then um, you you can know what the initial values a i and and b i are, and you the 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 function that we have defined here will define a function on ai and on bi uh, in a recursive fashion for instance um, we can see that um, the ai in this case doesn't change in in the second case ai gets doubled um, and in the third case, AI get added one. And this is exactly what is reflected in, in, in these three cases over here. And the same thing we can do for uh, BI. So as we, as we apply the function, we will also take uh, do accounting of, of these values AI and BI. And when we get a match, then what we get is that X of I equals the X of 2I modulo P. Um, using the previous uh, representation, we, we get this. And now the interesting part is that we can, uh, okay, we can separate now the H on the left and G to the right. And actually this is all we need because when, when we take the logarithm, then it means that we can express, um, we can express, <coughs> H as the logarithm of G. And this is exactly what we need. This is exactly what's what's going on in, in these slides. So this is a way when we when we get this equality and we keep track of the exponent, then by simple uh, mathematics we can determine the discrete logarithm of uh, H relative to G. Um, this this example has been taken from the handbook of applied cryptography which is, um, I think it's 25 or 30 years old, but it's still, it's a very good book on, on, on these kind of details. Um, and you will be asked probably to, to do an exercise on implementing this, this algorithm. Um, so what's the performance of this algorithm? Well, so assuming that this F is sufficiently random, then the expected running time is proportional to um, the square root of p and you should remind that that means that it's um, it's still um, it, it doesn't mean that it's uh, a good algorithm it still means that it's exponential um, in the size of of uh, the number of bits to write p um, in the example, we, we use the multiplicative group, but it's important that this algorithm can be applied to any group. In particular, it can be applied also to the group of points uh, on an elliptic curve. So this, this, is, this, um, this expression 
is exactly what I stated earlier, that roughly speaking to determine the security level of an elliptic curve, we have to divide the size of P by 2. So this is the justification of this, this argument. Um, when, when we have an uh, elliptic curve with a prime of 384 um, bits, then the security level is about 192. So one additional algorithm you should know about is called the, the index calculus method. Index is an old term for the discrete logarithm, um, which is an algorithm which works over the multiplicative group modulo prime. This algorithm, the index calculus method, is faster than Polydro, but it only works modulo a prime number. And this is possible because it can take some advantages of the properties of the set of integers. For instance, you can, you can have a number in modulo p, uh, but still you can factor it. Now this is something, there is structure there that's not available in the case of the points on an elliptic curve. So the index calculus method does not work in other groups. Um, so the, the best approach the fastest algorithm for discrete log on elliptic curves is is the polar draw which we just saw and that means that comparatively the the group size in elliptic curves can be much shorter because the the faster alternative of the index calculus method doesn't exist in the case of elliptic curves so we see here a table in which we we have the security level several security levels and we, we see the corresponding security levels of, of RSA or maybe discrete log modulo, modulo prime number in the first, in the, in the middle line. And on the last line, we see elliptic curves. Um, so you can see it's quite dramatic. If you want 256 bits of security, your elliptic curve will be, uh, need to be 512. Um, and in the case of RSA, it has to be uh, 50,000. So, so this is, here you can see clearly why elliptic curves are, are taking over cryptography. Yeah.